Let's talk about the internet. We use it all the time, but do we really know how any of it works? The internet is extremely complicated and you will need to have learned differential calculus and linear algebra. Just kidding. The internet is an extremely simple process and to understand it, it simply requires you to look at it from a different perspective. The internet is nothing. That's right, it doesn't exist. You may think to yourself, then how did I get on YouTube and watch this video? Let me explain that in a much simpler way. Here we have Bob and John. They live in the same city, however they live 50 kilometers away. Bob wants to send some of his delicious pies to John, except he doesn't have a car or legs, so he has to have someone else deliver it for him. The mailman comes, takes his product, and delivers it to John. He's happy, so he sends a letter of thanks back to him. That's, in its essence, how the internet works. Now, let's make this into real life. Bob has a computer, and John has a computer. Now, instead of roads, we have wires in the ground. Bob sends a file to John. The file travels through the wire, goes to Bob, and he sees that it says hi. This is called a network. When we have more than one network connected to each other, it's an internetwork, or internet. That is exactly how the internet works, but on a more complex level. Now we add a third computer. How does computer 1 know how to send information to computer 2? Obviously, it needs to know what path to follow. It needs an address. We call this an IP address, which stands for Internet Protocol. The computers are called servers. Now, let's spice things up a little bit. I want to access a file from Google. Well, Google.com is actually just another form of the IP address. Google's IP address is actually 74.125.224.72. To test this, go into your browser and type what you see on the screen, and you will be redirected into Google's page. In fact, Google owns a multitude of IP addresses, enough to own a range of addresses. When you want to Google something, your server connects to Google's server and Google sends the information you want back to you in the form of a website. In an upcoming short How Do Websites Work, we will explain more on this. Now that you know how simple data transfer works, you must be thinking to yourself, so why am I paying my internet service provider for? Well as you know, we don't all have wires from our house going to Google servers. If we did, it would be a mess of wires and it would be a whole lot of daily digging when you wanted to connect to a website. Rather, we pay the service providers that have the links to the web pages. That's also another reason you can't just wake up and decide, I want to have a website that's named this. If you want to learn more, go to how do websites work. Now our map is beginning to look like a real map. However, what is it that turns these cables into actual usable internet for us? The router and the modem here are heroes. The router connects to the modem and it turns that so-called cabled internet into Wi-Fi. We use that to transmit data back to the router which connects to the modem once again and continues on and on. Now, if we had two devices on the same network, how would the router know what information comes and goes from what? Well, once again, that is through the IP address, which is packaged with every piece of data you send. Now, let's make a final diagram to represent the transfer. Well, actually, there's one thing we're forgetting. How do things actually get sent over? If you remember from our video in How Do Computers Work, we explained that all information in computers is broken simply down into ones and zeros. So when we send our information, it all has to be broken down. When we send a picture, it's broken down into small parts called packages. These packages are sent over the internet and reassembled on the other server receiving them. Each package has a set of instructions on how to recreate it and where it's from. Then depending on the file format used, the file is rebuilt. Now, that we have a solidified understanding, we can connect some terminology. When you use a device on the internet, it is a point of presence, or a POP. And the internet service provider is a NAP, or a network access provider, who allows you to get onto the internet. Let's draw our final picture. First, we have several devices on the same network. Here is John, and here is Bob. John wants to put a picture on Facebook, so John uploads from his POP to the NAP, where the information travels to Facebook's POP, where the image is reassembled and stored. Now Bob is in the same house and he wants to see what John is doing upstairs. He uses his POP to connect to the NAP, which connects to one of Google's POPs, and finds his Facebook profile. 
Then that pop redirects him back to the NAB toward Facebook's pop where the image is broken into packages and sent back to John where it is reassembled and he sees it. This is a simple interaction that occurs in the internet every time you use it. A large amount of processes are happening in a split second, so sometimes you can understand when you have slow internet. There are many advances in the internet infrastructure, and with the new fiber optics being brought in, speeds are only getting faster and faster. International networks provide their own problems with creating underground networks throughout the sea. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment and leave any suggestions you have, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.